and, and uh, just steal somebody's soul. I'm not even a Rams fan and I shaved a Rams horn into my face to show unity for Von Miller and your beautiful Super Bowl victory. Steal somebody's soul. In a game that saw Matthew Stafford throw three touchdowns for 283 yards and two picks, but neither of those picks were significant and only one was his fault. Most importantly, Stafford was clutch. So take the words Stat Patford and incinerate them, you football dunce. He has more game-winning drives than any quarterback since he came Came into the league. And on the final drive of the Super Bowl, he moved the ball downfield in a game that was consumed by defense in the second half, hitting Cooper Cup twice for the game winning touchdown. Which was nice because Cup nearly lost his head on the first TD that didn't count. Cup went on to win Super Bowl MVP, and Odell Beckham Jr. was dominating this game, but he left tragically with a knee injury and his absence nearly cost the Rams the game. LA had 13 points with Odell and just 10 without him. Von Miller had two sacks, including a huge one late in the third. Aaron Donald ended the game with a sack, and the Rams' defensive front was the difference, dropping the coolest QB on earth seven times. Seven Rams Super Bowl sacks. Matthew Stafford said Leonardo DiCaprio should play him in a movie. I'll say Leonardo DiCaprio, special special actor. Um, I don't know how he is at throwing the football. Well, if Stafford was a DiCaprio movie, he'd be the Revenant because he was left for dead back in Detroit, constantly getting ripped apart by bears. But he survived to prove he's better than that and won the Oscar, fi I mean Lombardi, finally. And just like all of those salacious videos in the valley, the Rams came out on top with the ultimate money shot. But your journey to the Super Bowl started just over a year ago when Mr. Big Chest of the West, Sean McVay, traded Ryan Gosling for the forgotten QB from Detroit. And looking back, this is kind of like trading vanilla ice for Eminem. Stafford's new legacy started on the very first drive of the season. The first game in front of fans at SoFi Stadium, which would host the Super Bowl 154 days later. Stafford ran a bootleg and threw a bomb to Van Jefferson Airplane. The same exact play that earned John Elway Super Bowl MVP back in 1999. It was a 67 yard touchdown and it set the tone for the Rams entire season. The Rams have employed a bold strategy strategy when it comes to team building in the Sean McVay era. They said fuck the early rounds of the draft and they meant it. The Rams first pick in the last draft was wide receiver Tutu Atwell and he saw a combined 10 snaps on offense this year. Quick reminder, hey subscribe to this YouTube channel, that's good sports if you want more football videos. Now Von Miller and Odell Beckham Jr. were the two moves that put the Rams over the edge this season. Miller they got for a couple draft picks, OBJ because the Browns were dumb and didn't know how to use him. It did it didn't even matter that Deshaun Jackson basically quit on them mid-season to join the Raiders. <laughs> That's right, Deshaun. You could have played in your first Super Bowl at age 35 if you had just stuck it out in LA. Without those two mid-season acquisitions, though, the Rams don't make it through the NFC side of the playoffs this year. And without going balls out and trading for Stafford, the Rams would have still been beating Goff on the couch while Tom Brady played in another dang Super Bowl. So thank you for that, Sean McVay and Les Snead. LA hit a low point in November, losing three in a row to the Titans, 49ers, and Packers. Three playoff teams and two eventual one seeds. Looking back, losing to the Packers and Titans doesn't really seem like that big of a deal, does it? And everyone was clamoring that OBJ can't play anymore after one game. And that you can take Stafford out of Detroit, but you can't take Detroit out of Matt Stafford. All because he threw five picks in that stretch. LA won their next five and Aaron Donald ensured this team would not choke since he got all of their choking out of his system earlier this year. Cooper Cup of course won the Offensive Player of the Year after nabbing the triple crown of stats with the most receiving yards, touchdowns, and catches in a season becoming just one of three receivers to win Offensive Player of the Year. Joining Jerry Rice who did it twice and Michael, Michael Thomas. So yeah, Michael Thomas. We saw Matthew Stafford graduate from a boy into a man when he hung in the pocket in the face of a six-man rush and delivered a game-winning dime to Cooper Cup that vanquished the defending Super Bowl champion Buccaneers on their home field. Clock that shit! Clock it! But it looked like the Rams might meet their end when the San Francisco 49ers took a 10-point lead in the NFC title game. And let's be honest, you got a little bit lucky when Jaquiski Tart dropped a huge interception, but guess what? 
Ben Skoranek dropped a would-be touchdown pass from Stafford. Jalen Ramsey dropped a Jimmy G pick. Everybody was dropping everything. So this was not a lucky break for Matthew Stafford in the Rams. This was destiny. Andrew Whitworth won Walter Payton Man of the Year and at tackle at age 40 did the most impressive thing any 40-year-old man has ever done in an NFL postseason. That's right. I said it. LA relied on their big playmakers, Cooper Cup and OBJ, and they dug up the corpse of Eric Weddle, who led the team in tackles despite not having played since before fucking COVID. And now we can all buy the Detroit Rams shirts with pride. Pride like a freaking lion, baby. Thanks for watching the Rams Super Bowl in five minutes or less. Tomorrow I'll have the best and worst recap of the entire Super Bowl. Feel free to watch another video that's on my screen right now because if you don't, YouTube will, well, they will hunt, hunt down my family is what they say.